well, here's how well U.S. propaganda works on its own people. Most of you who have never served in the military or have no family members who have, have no idea what CENTCOM is, what it does, and how it affects the ongoing political crises in the most volatile region in the world today. But you know what it is now because Joseph Biden is slated to choose the former head of CENTCOM, retired General Lloyd Austin, to be his secretary of defense. You didn't know who that guy was until now either, but it is very, very important that you know these things. Austin is the former commander of CENTCOM or the U.S. Central Command overseeing the military operations of the United States in the Middle East that includes Egypt, Central Asia, and parts of South Asia. He led the command from 2013 to 2016 under the Obama Biden administration. Specifically, he was responsible for the U.S. military operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, and Syria. And that ought to raise enough alarms for you to be appalled at Biden's choice here. But if it doesn't, Austin was head of U.S. CENTCOM when the U.S. military was doctoring statistics to make it look like the war in Afghanistan was being quote unquote won when actually it was a bloody, ridiculous quagmire. This was being done before his tenure, certainly, but under his watch, it continued. And you read about it in the Afghanistan papers if you read them at all. He was the head of CENTCOM when the Obama administration decided to sell weapons to Saudi Arabia to support their proxy war against Iran in Yemen. U.S. fuel support to Saudi bombers have contributed to thousands of civilian deaths by coalition bombings, including those that destroyed schools, hospitals, and civilian infrastructure. The humanitarian crisis in Yemen grew to un fathomable proportions affecting tens of millions of Yemenis under the U.S.-supported Saudi onslaught. The Saudi regime blocked efforts at U.N. human rights investigations and continued to bomb civilians, and the U.S. sent calm operations of support to the Saudis, fueling bombers, providing logistics, etc., also continued. He was the head of CENTCOM when the Obama administration implemented the program that was supposed to build an anti-ISIS army in Syria. Obama asked Congress for $500 million to do it, and the program ultimately netted nothing except a congressional hearing in which Austin revealed that his intelligence director was being investigated by the Pentagon amid whistleblower claims that intelligence assessments of the U.S. military operations in the region were altered to reflect a more positive view than the black hole of money, bodies, and destruction that was the reality. We all know what a nightmare the invasion and occupation of Iraq was and still is, and Austin led CENTCOM in the continuing U.S. military strategy to keep the region destabilized, claiming the need to stay to combat terrorism. But honestly, if the U.S. hadn't ever invaded Iraq or destroyed Libya or gotten involved in Syria or invaded Afghanistan, terrorism wouldn't be an issue. The possibility of future attacks on the U.S. that the war hawks claim the U.S. military is in the region defending against are actually made all the more possible because of the continued U.S. involvement and destruction of overseas regions by the U.S. Central Command. Depending on who you ask, Austin may be supported or strenuously opposed by Republicans who have to confirm him in the Senate. Now, I honestly really don't care whether the man gets confirmed for this position or not, because to me, this is so completely not the issue. The problem here is twofold. Biden is clearly making an effort to finish what his former boss, Barack Obama, started with the disastrous Obama doctrine in the Middle East. Despite all the money thrown at allegedly stabilizing a region, this government blew up. That Biden is still committed to this path of policies lets you know that he meant it when he said nothing would fundamentally change. 
He meant that when he said it to Wall Street executives. But remember that the defense industrial complex is tied to Wall Street as the stock prices of defense contractors are heavily reliant on the ability of the U.S. military to continue to produce a need for them to keep making weapons, to keep selling weapons, and to keep using those weapons around the world. Having been on the board of directors of Raytheon, one of the largest defense contractors in the world, Austin also understands the need to continue to wage war so that the stock prices of the defense industry remain high and those profits keep rolling in. The other problem is one of representation. Here is where the demands for representation in a warmongering imperialist regime fall woefully short. The Department of Defense is arguably the largest employer on the planet, and not coincidentally is one of the few U.S. employers that provides its employees with, get this, free health care, housing, tuition assistance, and other benefits. Benefits that are absolutely unequally distributed and not at all adequate as many enlisted level military families have had to rely on food stamps to survive. But if you move up in the ranks, then your benefits get better. Few other U.S. industries or employers offer this and promise a pension upon retirement. And in a world now ravaged by coronavirus that was already ravaged by savage racial and class inequality in employment and compensation, is it really a coincidence that Biden would pick a black man to lead the largest employer on the planet in a country in which the non-white population is shrinking and that non-white population is also demanding a more just and equitable, sustainable economy for themselves and their families? So instead of actually providing that for everyone, the democratic imperialist regime presents a figurehead in the person of retired General Lloyd Austin, a highly decorated black military man to hopefully usher young people with few life-sustaining employment options into the economy of death that the U.S. military represents. And this is when the calls for us to have a seat at the table are exposed as the immature and empty demands they are for having a black face and a high place that doesn't serve us at all. Because when the table we're sitting at is U.S. imperialism and the exportation of domination and death around the world comes from that table, we need to excuse ourselves from that meal. Follow Lukeman Nation on Patreon.com slash Lukeman Nation for lots of great content.